Okay, the next uh, speaker is, is online, I think. Uh, is Anna Silva. Yes, sir. It's, it's not needed for uh, the she's online. Uh, and uh, she's from uh, Federal University of Ceará in Brazil. Uh, and she will speak about temporal manger and related problems. Okay, so thank you for the presentation. Um, so today I'm going to talk about temporal manger uh, and related problems. Uh, so I will be mostly talking, um, I, I will try to give uh, kind of uh, uh, the complete picture about temporal manger, uh, but uh, of course I will be talking also about some of my work. So uh, the work that I will present that uh, I did it was uh, joined with uh, Alain Biapina, who is my PhD student. Raul Lopes, uh, who is a postdoc at the uh, University Paris Dauphine, and Andrea Marino, who is a professor here at uh, uh, Universita de Suzy de Firenze, where I'm spending a year as a visiting professor. Okay, so I will uh, go through a little fast uh, through these definitions since uh, we have seen them uh, multiple times today. But I will be working with uh, the model uh, where we have a graph and uh, each edge is going to appear in a certain uh, subset of, of the times. Uh, I will be representing the times where an edge appear like this. So for instance, edge X, Y appears in time one and two. And uh, I, will, I will be working only with finite things. So I will be calling the lifetime uh, the maximum uh, appearance of an edge. And I will denote it by tau. Also, each time I talk about a uh, temporal vertex, I mean a pair uh, vertex time and as well temporal edge appear edge time. So if I say simply vertex, I mean a vertex of the underlying graph. And if I say temporal vertex, I mean uh, such a pair and the same for temporal edges. Okay, so I'm usually interested in these uh, two types of questions. The first one, uh, which are the basic uh, adaptations of uh, graph theory concepts. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the structure polynomial results uh, uh, that could carry over nicely uh, from uh, basic graph theory, um, uh, basic graph theory. So, but in this uh, talk, I will be concentrating on, of course, uh, Menger theorem related concepts, and the related uh, questions would be uh, what are the versions of Menger theorem that hold, and of course, about the complexity of the related problems. Um, okay, but before uh, I tell you about the temporal context uh, of this theorem, um, let, let us remind ourselves what, uh, what is Menger's theorem. So Menger's theorem talks about uh, disjoint paths and separators. And uh, so for instance, here in this graph, uh, if I'm given this pair of vertices S and T, then a set of paths from S to T uh, is called disjoint if uh, they are internally vertex disjoint. So for instance, these three paths here are, uh, are disjoint. And a separator is simply a subset of the vertices, excepting, of course, uh, the, the extremities uh, that separates these guys, right? So in this example, I can take uh, these three vertices, and this is a separator, since, uh, since it includes all the neighbors of T. Uh, okay, and of course, here, when I talk about uh, disjoint paths uh, is natural to try to maximize the number of uh, paths that you can take. And uh, if you're talking about separator, it's natural to try to minimize the size of a separator. And well, in this example, we saw that uh, these two things are equal, right? The maximum number of paths is three and also the size of separator. And this is not uh, by chance. It's actually because Menger theorem tells us that it's always equal. This is a very nice, uh, very old, uh, almost 100 years uh, result, uh, which have uh, many consequences, uh, both in practice and also in theory. You can uh, uh, take, uh, you can deduce some uh, very important uh, theorems from it. And uh, because of its importance, it's natural to ask what happens uh, in the temporal context. So let's go now to, to the temporal context. Well, the first thing to do, of course, is uh, try to understand what are the concepts involved, right? So if uh, Menger is talking about walks, then uh, the first thing is uh, what, what is an, a walk for us? What is a path for us? And uh, naturally, uh, when we are in the temporal context, we don't want uh, the paths or the walks to go back in time. Uh, in this example here, uh, this would not be considered uh, a walk from, from T to S. 
right? Because it uses this edge here time four and then goes back in time to use this. this. We don't want to allow that to happen. Uh, but this uh, is going to be a valid uh, path or walk. And uh, uh, even though all the examples that we see here today will be strictly increasing, uh, I would like to point out right now that uh, the results has, are actually uh, not considering strictly increasing uh, paths, okay? So it could, uh, it could be, if it was one and one, then this would also be a valid uh, path. Okay, so given that uh, we are with uh, this definition now, uh, we can uh, do a direct translation uh, of Menger's uh, concepts uh, to, this, uh, to this set. Now, simply substituting what we had in, uh, in paths, ST paths now by uh, temporal ST paths. So we'll call a set of uh, temporal ST paths disjoints if they are internally vertex disjoints. So they do not share any vertex of uh, the underlying graph. And uh, similarly, the separator you can uh, define as a subset that will separate uh, these two guys. And if you do it like that, you can uh, again, try to maximize one, minimize the other and call uh, this vertex joint Menger's property will be uh, exactly the adaptation, the direct translation of uh, Menger's theorem telling us that this version of, uh, of Menger's theorem holds, uh, meaning that the maximum of the joint pass, temporal pass will be equal to the minimum size of a separator. Well, this direct translation is known not to hold uh, since 96. Uh, I think that it was Berman who presented an example, but I'm going to show, uh, to, show to you an example given actually by Kempe, Kleinberg and Kummer. Uh, and well, so in this example here, uh, I want to convince you that I need more vertices to separate S from T than the number, the maximum number of ST uh, paths. So I am talking about these S and these T. So first I want, I want to argue that uh, there are no two disjoint uh, temporary ST paths. Suppose otherwise, then these paths uh, have to use these two temporal edges here since they are the only two edges uh, incident to S. But now uh, the red uh, uh, path must go down uh, this edge uh, labeled with six, otherwise it would go back in time, right? Uh, using the two or three would go back in time. So now it uses six and now I'm stuck with, uh, with uh, the blue path, right? The blue path cannot arrive to T since it must uh, pass through either U or Y and the, and the red path is blocking it. Okay, so indeed, this tells us that uh, the maximum number of uh, temporary ST paths, uh, dis vertex disjoint temporary ST paths is one. And now I want to argue that indeed I need uh, more guys. I need two guys to uh, separate us from T. Okay, so suppose otherwise, if we don't need two, because there is at least one path, right? We see here that it, there is at least one path. It means that I need one. Well, uh, this one that uh, would separate cannot be X, right? Because I have this path here, five, six, seven. Cannot be Y because of this path, one, two, three, and cannot be U because of this path, one, four, four seven. Uh, and of course, uh, these two guys here separates us from T because they include all the neighbors of S. And again, uh, I have what I was claiming at the beginning that the minimum size of a separator is two, which is bigger than the maximum number of temporary ST paths. Okay, so um, as I told you before, this was uh, an example presented uh, in this paper, uh, which is highly uh, cited as a seminal paper in the field. Uh, and in the same, the same paper, uh, they defined uh, what they call the Mangarian graph, which basically is a graph where you cannot, uh, from where you cannot build a counterexample to, to uh, Menger's uh, property meaning that whatever function that you put on the edges, you will uh, end up with, uh, with a temporal graph that has equality, right? That uh, the maximum number of paths is equal to the size of a minimum separator. Uh, so they give this definition and they characterize these graphs when you are constrained to uh, temporal graphs where each edge can appear only once. So if you add this constraint, then they proved that the graph is Mangaria if and only if it does not have uh, this graph here, which is called a gem as a, uh, as a subdivision. A subdivision is simply taking any edge and replacing by a path. And they prove that it can be recognized in polynomial time. 
myself and uh, my PhD student recently uh, generalized the result by proving that uh, now if you remove the constraint, right, so if you allow the edges to appear as many times as you want, then a graph will be Mengerian if and only if it does not have one of these three uh, graphs as an M subdivision, and we can recognize it uh, as well in polynomial time. And an M subdivision is the same as a subdivision, except that when you subdivide one of these edges here with multiplicity two, then you have to put a path whose edges have multiplicity two. So everybody there has to, has to appear at least twice as well. Okay, uh, moving on. So we saw an example, a bad example, right? So that uh, a bad version of temporal manger that does not hold, but uh, things do not finish there, right? Perhaps uh, there are other interpretations. And I think at least to me, the next uh, more natural one is to uh, go for uh, disjointness in the temporal vertices, right? So if we are now uh, asking for two uh, uh, walks to be internally uh, temporal vertex disjoint, then in this example here, these two paths will be considered to be disjoint since uh, the, the blue one is using a vertex U, but in time two and three, uh, and the red one also uses you, but in different times, in five and six. So they are uh, what we call uh, T vertex joint. And uh, well, uh, naturally, the adaptation of uh, the separator concept would be a subset of uh, temporal vertices, right? Always excluding the extremities, otherwise, uh, it's not fun. <laughs> So a set of temporal vertices that breaks all temporal ST walks, right? Or in other words, that intersects all temporal from S to T. In this example, if I remove X1 and U5, these would be uh, T versus ST separators since uh, these are the, the end vertices of the only temporal edges incident to S. Okay, so, and as we see, this example, the same example that broke uh, Menger's uh, property for vertex jointness, now does not work anymore, right? Uh, we had uh, uh, two T vertex disjoint uh, walks, but uh, uh, separator also, also of size two, of course. Uh, and uh, well, this has a reason we cannot break it uh, because again, now this holds. Uh, in this paper, uh, Matthews, Michael, and Spirakis prove, proved that uh, indeed the maximum number of uh, temporal vertex disjoint ST walks is equal to the minimum size of a separator in this case, and they can be found in polynomial time. Well, uh, this is nice. We came from something very bad to something very good, uh, but you might have noticed that I changed from, uh, from talking about paths to talking about walks now, right? It was not uh, by chance. Again, it was because uh, we noticed recently that uh, in this uh, T vertex jointness uh, context, walks and paths uh, differ. And uh, differ, they differ a lot. So we, I will first um, show you that they differ so much that this breaks, this does not hold anymore when we are talking about paths. And to show you this, let's take a look at this example. So now in this example, I want to find uh, three T vertex disjoint paths between S and T, uh, and I'll, I'll not be able to do it. And, uh, and then I will show you that I need at least three uh, temporal vertices to break all the paths. Uh, I should have uh, explained the, earlier that uh, the difference, right, between paths and walks is simply that a path, uh, in a path coming from, um, uh, graph theory concepts in a path, you're not allowed to repeat a vertex. Okay, so in order to show that uh, this is a bad example, uh, in this context, I first want to say that uh, there are no three different paths here, uh, suppose otherwise. So th these three paths, again, must use uh, these three temporal edges since they are the only uh, edges incident to S. Uh, but now the red, path uh, must go down to you, right? Because otherwise, if it remains there in X until the next uh, timestamp, then it will intersect uh, the green path in the temporal vertex X2. So I'm forced to go down to you. But now as I am in U, I cannot go back to X because uh, this would not be a path, this would be a, a walk. I have to go down and I have to go down to Y either in temp 
uh, in timestamp one or two, but in either case, I will be bound right to intersect uh, the blue path. Okay, so indeed, uh, there are no three uh, disjoint paths in this case. There are two, here are two possible uh, such paths. Uh, and now I want to argue that, uh, as I was telling you, that uh, this is smaller, strictly smaller than the number of uh, temporal vertices that I need to, to break all the paths. Well, in order to show you that, first observe that the existence of this path here, passing by X, uh, forces me to have uh, in any separator to have the X to the temporal vertex X2 inside of it. And uh, the existence of the blue path forces me to have uh, some copy of uh, vertex Y. Okay, so suppose that uh, we can uh, break all the ST paths with uh, two guys, right? Then as I was saying, I need to add X2 and some, uh, some copy of Y. If I add the first copy of Y, this is not a separator because of this path here, okay? And if I add uh, the second or the third copy of Y, this is also not a separator because of this path here. So indeed I need at least three and if I pick these three, I, I am uh, successful since they are the end, uh, the end points of all the temporal edges incident to S. Okay, um, this was a little sad, but uh, the next question, I think the next temporal question is, uh, what about uh, decreasing this to one, right? Because the, the previous example for the vertex disjoint uh, version of Menger we had one pass and a separator of size two. Uh, can we do uh, that? And the answer is no, because of uh, uh, the first result that I'm going to show you. Uh, so let's call this the T vertex disjoint Minger's property. So now I am uh, with a maximum number K of uh, disjoint paths. And I'm trying to say that this is equal to the minimum size of a separator. Uh, we proved that uh, interestingly enough, uh, this is always true, but only for k equal to one. So if I have uh, just one path, then there will be some uh, vertex separating these two guys, S and T. Uh, so again, as I told you, this means that uh, this is best possible. I cannot uh, make uh, another example with uh, just one path. Uh, okay, so up to now, I only talked about uh, versions of uh, Menger, right? And I promised you in the beginning that I would talk about, uh, about that and also about the complexity of the related problems. So for the last uh, part of my talk, uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the complexity. Uh, so first, I, I, I can, uh, there is a spoiler. <laughs> I can tell you that everything is going to be hard again. Uh, for the pass problem, for the T vertex joint pass problem. But before I, I show you uh, the state of the art of the complexity of all these problems, I wanted to uh, talk at least ab about uh, two of the positive results that we get. The first one is uh, for the separator problem. So if you think about uh, the separator problem, what, what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to take a subset of a given size, size age, and we are trying to uh, break all the paths between S and T with these guys. So a natural way of doing that in XP time when parameterized by age is simply uh, looking at all the possible uh, su such sets of size age, and then uh, testing whether this intersects all the temporal ST paths. So this is the usual approach, I would say the usual trivial approach to solve in uh, any kind of problem like this uh, in XP time. And the first observation is that this does not uh, treat this, this holds, but not trivially because this test here is a coin P complete problem. So testing whether a certain subset uh, of temporal vertices intersects everybody is coin P complete. In another, another way of looking at this is uh, that uh, if you now consider a graph because you, when you remove S from the temporal graph, this is kind of saying that you are in a new model of temporal graphs where the vertices uh, can become inactive, right? So uh, this theorem is also, is also telling us that if you are in this model, 
where the vertices now can become inactive, then uh, it's NP complete to decide whether there is one path, just one path from S to T uh, is hard to do. But uh, uh, not always lost because as I told you before, this still works, uh, but using a more, um, uh, let's say, a more uh, smarter approach, right? Then uh, just uh, trying to, to find a path. Uh, we can solve this, we can do this test uh, in time uh, h to the power of h, m tau, where m is uh, the number of edges in the underlying graph, and tau, as I told you in the beginning, is the lifetime of the graph. Okay, so this gives us that uh, the separators problem is uh, xp solved in xp time when parameterized by h. Uh, and well, the second thing that uh, I would like to show you is about an algorithm that finds two T vertex joint paths. Well, in order to, so we, we can simply uh, decide whether they exist, but we are also finding them. And the way that we do is observe that the, the previous uh, slide tells us that uh, this test here, testing whether there, there exists one guy that uh, intersects all the paths, in other words, uh, a separator of size one, this can be done in time in m n tau square, since I can do, I can test for a fixed guy in this time and tau, and then I test for every, every guy, right, which are in tau. So I get, uh, I get this complexity for this test. So now the way that I find the, the, this true T vertex joint test T pass would be like this. I first test if this is true. Well, if this is true, then I can already get out of, of the algorithm because if there is one guy that intersects everybody, for sure there will not be true T vertex joint paths. So I get out of the algorithm. And otherwise I will uh, start with G prime and I will start to remove uh, temporary edges from it like this. Uh, for each temporary edge, I will, uh, test if this, when I remove this edge, if this test is still true. So I remove it and I still have, uh, I still do not have a separator size one. In other words, uh, I still have at least two uh, paths. If this is uh, true, then I remove this edge. Otherwise I, I leave it there. I do that and at the end, uh, we can prove that I am left with a very simple graph, uh, that uh, simple graph, sorry that is formed exactly by two T vertex joint paths and that uh, it's doing a simple simple search on the, on the graph uh, will find uh, the desired paths. Okay, and the, the reason why I wanted to talk about uh, this also is because, uh, okay, the time I forgot to say. The time is this one since I have to repeat this test uh, M tau times and uh, well, and the reason I like this is because this only holds uh, because of the Menger version that I showed you before, uh, because now when I do not have a separate of size one, so when this test fails, our Menger version uh, of the, of, uh, the theorem. Uh, Anna, five minutes. Us, thank you, <laughs> I'm always there. Uh, ensures us that uh, there will be the two paths, right? Before, when we test, oh, there is no one guy that separates everybody. My separator of size at least two. Well, this does not ensure us uh, the existence of two paths in the vertex joint uh, approach, but here we, we are ensured to have. So the Menger version is really important for this algorithm to work. Okay, so now finally, I will uh, talk about uh, the complexity. So this is my table. Uh, here is the vertex uh, version, vertex joint version, the T vertex joint version. As we talked about this, uh, the walks and the paths problem are distinct and here uh, they are the same. Here they're talking about uh, the maxima, uh, maximization problem uh, and here the separator problem and here if uh, Menger holds or not. And we, uh, this uh, is filled like this. Actually, I have, uh, I thought I had more time. So <laughs> let me go a little faster here. Uh, so basically uh, everything is hard with the exception of the T-vertex walks uh, problems, which is polynomial. And here are our results. So we proved that uh, 
the problem, uh, the separators problem is XP when parameterized by the size, right, age. So this means that when age is equal to one, it's polynomial also when age is equal to two. We saw that uh, Menger holds when the maximum number of paths is one and deciding whether there is one path is easy. You can simply apply any reachability algorithm. Uh, we also give you uh, an algorithm to find two disjoint paths if they exist. Uh, we proved, and finally, we proved that the disjoint pass problem is NP complete. And uh, even if uh, K is fixed equal to three with lifetime three as well, uh, in the case that G is directed, and the separator problem is going to be hard for given age. Uh, here are all the citations. If you want the, the slides, uh, the things are complete. And uh, my final, some final remarks. Well, first of all, we saw that there is a, a clear distinction when you consider vertices and temporal vertices. Uh, and this distinction play a crucial role in the, in the hardness of the problem. Uh, usually the temporal vertex versions are more approachable, but in our case, uh, just a little bit more approachable. Uh, paths and walks are distinct concepts. This is not the first time we already saw today another talk that was uh, putting this into evidence. Uh, I also like uh, our result about the disjoint paths because it's a nice uh, reminder that sometimes structural properties can lead to polynomial algorithms. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to, it's important that I mention that in this paper here, uh, there is another version of Menger's theorems that hold, but there they talk about all the departure time, which I think is more close to uh, the edge version of, of Menger. And since I was talking about uh, vertex versions, I preferred not to confuse it even more. So, but it's there if uh, anybody wants to see it. Uh, and so some open questions, uh, we characterize them in Gary graphs, right? But uh, we could ask about uh, assigning uh, a function uh, for which the, the equality holds, right? So Mengerian graph is for everything, uh, for every function, things are nice. But what about finding just some function where things are nice? Uh, also, we left open uh, the problem for k fixed when g is uh, undirected. And finally, of course, we can still wonder about other possible uh, temporal member concepts. Uh, and that's it. I hope I didn't uh, um, exploit too much my time. Thank you for your attention. I'll take only one question because there is no time. For, so the last speaker will have the opportunity to speak. Uh, so is there any question? Any question from the online people? Can I can I ask a question, Paul? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Anna, for the nice talk. Um, can you show the slide with this forbidden uh, topological minors uh, characterization? Sure. Yeah. So this uh, the, in the previous slide you forbid uh, this diamond, and the next slide you forbid. Uh, two extra graphs, but you forbid it in a different way or the same way? It's uh, in a slightly different way because here I am considering that I already know that this edge here will appear at least twice. So that, that's what it means to have a multiple edge. Right, right but, but, but the diamond is forbidden in the same way, right? The diamond, yes, at the end of the day, is the same way since because it doesn't have any multiple edge, the definition of M subdivision and subdivision will collapse will be the same. So your your class of graphs is a subclass of the original class? Is a subclass, yes, yeah. because you have to forbid this as a, uh, you cannot have this as a subdivision. And on top of that, you cannot have uh, this as an M subdivision nor this as an M subdivision. Ah, right, it should be subclass. Okay, so actually my question was whether you know any other structural characterization of this class of graphs. Do you know any properties like bounded three bits or anything else? No, no. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, let's thank the speaker again then. Thank you.